cutting threads, particularly custom threads, where you can't look all of the numbers up in the machinery sandbook, are pretty darn intimidating. At least they were to me. So in this episode, I'm going to try to make sense out of it and demystify threads. Welcome to another episode. I watched a lot of videos in preparation for creating this video about thread milling and threads, and I just tried to make sense of it. Everyone uh, kept referring to the machinery sandbook, so I cracked that open and discovered there were close to 300 pages on threads, a whole bunch of diagrams, a bunch of charts, and I was lost. So I decided to dig into it to really understand it, and I spent a very long time on this video, much longer than I normally spend on videos, trying to get to the bottom of it and simplify it in a way that is something that I would have understood. In other words, I'm creating the video that I wanted to watch, as well as the information that I wanted to find. I hope you find this uh, useful as well, so let's head to the computer and get started. I'm working on this watch project, as you can see here, with a company in Italy. And we want to have the back, as you can see here, screwed on to the case. So that means I need to make a thread here, as well as a thread here. This is 27 millimeters in diameter, and that means I can't, of course, use either a tap or a die. I also don't want to use a lathe for this, because I'm going to be doing the rest of the work on a CNC milling machine. So that means I need to use a thread mill, and I also need to do some calculations to figure out what the diameter should be for starting with this, and the diameter to start with this, and then also the thread depth. I did some research and discovered that the common pitch for the case backs is 0.5 millimeter pitch. So that's what I'm going to be using in the examples here. But as I mentioned before, these principles apply to both metric and to imperial, and of course to different sizes than what I'm using here. I'm using the Machinery's Handbook, which has a wealth of information about threading, as well as many other subjects. This is the 31st edition. You can see here just how much information there is. If I pull this open, let's see, threading is over here. This is just the beginning of the table of contents. There are close to 300 pages of information on threading. The first part is about imperial threads, which is quite a bit of information. It goes from 1940 to about page 2020. I'm going to be using metric threads in this case because that's what it's of interest to me. The thing that's different, as far as I can tell, between imperial and metric threads, the main thing, is how tolerancing works, and it seems as if tolerancing is more complicated with metric than it is with imperial. This table shows common combinations of diameter and pitch, and as you can see here, there is no entry for 27 by 0.5, and that means I need to understand how to calculate all of these dimensions myself before I can cut threads. I started by looking at this chart here, and this confused me for a long time because it's mixing both the screw and the nut, and it also doesn't tell you what clearances you need to have, the tolerances, etc. So I took a deep dive into this, and what I'm going to do is walk you through what I finally figured out after pouring through this material, spending hours and hours trying to understand it. For my case, because I'm going to thread mill and I'm using Fusion 360, another piece of information that is important to calculate is this pitch diameter offset. When this value is zero, it basically means it's not cutting into the material at all. So this is effectively how deep to cut the threads, and it's based on diameter than radius, so it's twice the depth. What we're wanting to get to, one of the, the sets of numbers, is what dimension to use for the outside of the screw before we thread mill, as well as the dimension to use for the inside of the nut before we thread mill. You'll see later on that the handbook uses uppercase letters for the nut and lowercase letters for the screw. We were just talking about the pitch diameter offset. 
which is the distance from this crest, or this crest, down to the root. And I've shown the root coming to a sharp point here. That often isn't the case. In my particular case, I looked at the thread mill I have, and I can't see a flat. I've shown the flat here. If you do have a flat, and you know the distance from the theoretical tip to the flat, then you would reduce the depth that you cut by that amount. So bringing this back to the watch project, D average is going to be the outside diameter on the back, and then D1 is going to be the inside diameter on the case. And these are the starting values that I'm going to mill before I do the thread milling. In this diagram, the orange line that you see here is the ideal profile. Now, if both the screw and the nut had that profile, there would be no gap that would keep them from binding. The tolerances would be too tight. So that means we have to have some gap between the screw and the nut. And the gap is made up of two things. One of the things is the value ES, which is called the deviation. And so the deviation is the minimum distance for a specific tolerance class between the screw and the nut to make sure that they don't bind. In the machinery's handbook, ES is a negative number, so I've shown this distance here as an absolute value of ES divided by 2 because ES is the deviation of the diameter, and we're showing radius here, effectively. The other thing is we have this other distance, which is TD2, and again you'll notice that we have two values that say TD2, one is lowercase for the D, the other is uppercase for the D. And this is again where they use lowercase for the screw and uppercase for the nut. So this is the tolerance range between basically the tightest and the loosest that you're allowed to have for a specific tolerance grade or class. Again, this is based on diameter, so we have to divide it by 2 to get this actual distance. There's a similar one over here for the nut, and then there's also this other value, which is how much deviation you can have on the crest itself. And that was a little bit of a simplification. For nuts, there's actually this clearance as well, or is this deviation called EI. I didn't show it before because in my case, I'm actually using the position of H, which means that EI is actually a zero in my case. And we'll come back to this later when we talk about nuts. Now we're gonna to start to calculate the various values. The first one is this value here. The value we want to calculate is from the crest here to the peak there, and so that's a distance of 5 eighths and 1 quarter, and so the two together gives you 7 eighths. So that height is when you're not taking any of the tolerances into account. As you can see here, it's basically the top there and there. It's just subtracting uh, this value here, which is the deviation. What I want to do is have the tolerances end up right in the middle of the range. So that means I want, instead of 7 eighths, I want the value from here, the middle of this range, down to here, which is the middle of that range. Now this range here is TD over 2, so the middle of that range will be TD over 4. And likewise, the middle of this range is going to be TD2 over 4. So that means what I want to do is shorten this by TD over 4, so here you can see I'm subtracting td over 4. And then I want to lengthen it by this right here. So I'm adding td2 over 4. And so this is the final depth that I'm going to want to enter into Fusion 360 as the pitch diameter offset. So now that I have this value here, I want to calculate the diameter for the crest. And so the diameter for the crest is this value right here. And what that means is, first I need to take from the ideal, subtract this value, which is ES divided by 2, the absolute value of that, because it's negative. And then I want to subtract this, which is TD over 4, and that will give me the center right there of the tolerance range. So what I'm doing is taking the nominal diameter, which in my case is 27 millimeters, adding ES, which again is negative, and then subtracting TD divided by 2. And it's TD divided by 2 and ES without a division by 2, because this is diameter and these are both radius. This final chart shows all the values that I need. So here 
it shows how to calculate d average, which we just did. Here we have the height, which goes into this equation here, to calculate the depth of the threads, assuming that it comes to a sharp point. And then of course we have the pitch. So now we have everything to be able to calculate the numbers I need to be able to machine the threads. I just need to look up these values, ES, TD, and TD2, for which I can do from the Machinery's Handbook. So let's go ahead and do the calculations. As I mentioned, the first thing is I have a pitch of 0.5 millimeters, and then the diameter is 27 millimeters. From that I can calculate the height, which is 0.433 millimeters. The next set of numbers I'm going to look up in the Machinery's Handbook. So the first one, ES, which is the upper deviation, is on page 220. So I'll move forward to page 220, and then this table over here, it's in this part of the chart right here. You can see ES is this column. And I want to go to 0.5, and then for tolerance I'm going to choose this one, G. And so that gives me minus 0 0.02. And then TD is on page 224, table 9. So we'll move to 224, table 9. And then I'm going to use tolerance grade 6. So you can see that for 0.5, we want to enter 0 0.106. So the next one we want to choose is TD2, which is on page 2024 as well, but table 11. Okay, it's actually on page 2025. And if we look at this right here, it's a little hard to see, but this is the, the basic major diameter over and up to. And so if we go down to where we are, 27, we don't have 0.5, so I'm going to back up and just use the, the value that I can with the largest diameter. Again, I'm going to use 6 as the tolerance grade, and so that gives us 0 0.075. Now from those three numbers, we can calculate the machined diameter, which is 26.927 millimeters. And then we can calculate the pitch diameter offset that I will enter into Fusion 360. And that's all that we need to be able to machine the threads. This is very much like the screw. There are a few small differences, but there are a lot of things that are similar. You've got the same types of tolerances here, as well as the deviation. In my case, I'm using a designation of 6H. I used 6G for the screw, and quite often a 6G screw is paired with a 6H nut. A position of H means that the value is actually zero for EI. So it's actually a pretty close fit, and the separation we get is coming from ES on the, the screw. The other difference is that this height from here to here is 6 eighths, whereas on the screw it was 7 eighths. So it's a small difference, but it is a difference. Again, we do a similar calculation to calculate this distance, d1. So we have to subtract you know, from here, which is the nominal diameter, 5 eighths, which you see there. It's turned into 5 fourths because we have to turn it into a diameter, whereas this is a radius. And then we have to add ei. Now, if we look over here, this is where we calculate the actual height or the depth of the thread. So the actual depth of the thread, we need to compensate for TD over 2, which is this distance here. So we have to basically uh, increase from here to there by TD over 2. Likewise, we have to decrease from here to there by TD1 over 2. And so this is the equation we have right there. Again, divided by 4 instead of divided by 2, so that we go to the center of the range. And then this is the final version that contains everything you need to know to be able to calculate this inside diameter for the hole, for the nut, and then the depth of the thread mill or whatever tool you're using to cut the threads, assuming it's a, a sharp point.
I wanted to make sure that my equations were correct and everything that I explained to you was correct. So I created some profiles in Fusion 360, as you can see here, so that I could cut threads. Those are all based on the equations that I put into Fusion 360. So you've got the pitch, height, major diameter, those are the inputs. These are the values along with these two or these three here that I looked up in the Machinery's Handbook. And then these are the equations that you saw in the previous slides. So this was a sanity check to make sure everything looked okay. And then to go even further, I, let me turn off the section, I created, and these as well, a thread in a nut, or a screw in a nut. The screw is set to be M3.5 and class 6G, and then the nut, as I mentioned earlier, is set to class 6H, which is the only option that's available in Fusion 360. So turning the section analysis back on, if I show the screw in the nut and we zoom in, you can see that my calculations exactly match the threads on the screw in the nut that was created by Fusion 360. So this tells me that I got everything correct. Now one thing I'm planning to do after I put this video up, probably in a day or so, is to create a blog post with the same information so that you'll have the charts easily accessible. Once I do that, I will put the description down below. So please come back in a day or so and check for that if you need to look up the equations. I hope you found this uh, episode useful. I certainly found it useful. I now understand all of this and I can now calculate these equations easily, so I'm ready to start working on the threads for the watch back and the case. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe, and if you've already subscribed, you can click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I have another video. See you next time.